Okay, so uh, in this section, like I talked about Friday morning, what we're doing is we're building on what we did with relative velocities. So this time we're dealing with relative accelerations. And in this particular problem, we've got a gear and the gear is rolling across. And it's important to note that the point of contact with our gear right there has a velocity of zero. Okay, that's got a velocity of zero. And what we need to do then is to figure out what it's asking us for is the acceleration of point A. Okay. So what we have to do first is we have to figure out what is the acceleration and the velocity of the center of this thing. Okay, what's A naught, or yeah, A zero, and what's V zero? So the way I went about doing this uh, was to write down what we knew about alpha and omega, just like that. And then I knew that A zero, or A, yeah, whatever it is, A, A zero, let's call it, uh, would be some alpha crossed with the distance. Now, the distance that I crossed it with there happens to be the distance from this point of no motion up to the center, just like that. So that's why I used a value of 0.3 for that radius. And uh, once we take out that cross product, we realize that we what we are left with is uh, 1.8 times i is our value for alpha, okay? Now, we could have done this a little more, mm, less formally, let's say, because we could have said, I've got my circle, I know it's moving, I know it has an acceleration, um, which means every point on this thing, every point on that big gear has that alpha, acceleration. That alpha acceleration doesn't change depending on where you are. Okay, so we could just treat this like a line. And this line has a certain acceleration. Okay, and that's going to tell us about what's happening on either that end, or on this end. So from that perspective there, I could have just written that the tangential acceleration there was going to be equal to um, the uh, alpha r term. Yeah, alpha times r. OK, just like that. But I wanted to show you how to formally do that. So that's why I did it with a cross product, alpha cross an r. OK, and I picked the r from where I knew it was 0 uh, up to the top there. And then I did the same thing, uh, again, really formally with V naught to find out what the velocity vector for the center of that thing was. OK. All right, then we're going to come up. And I'm sorry it got chopped off just a little bit. I'm going to see if I can't fix that for you here. Um, our equation is the acceleration at A is the acceleration at our known point, then the cross product, and remember that is the tangential acceleration, and then this is the normal acceleration. Now, what got chopped off in my picture is that this is actually omega squared, and this is R O to A vector like that. Okay, and um, then just like what we had before, all we have to do is execute it. And there's no, no real tricky bits there. We've got a cross product to, to contend with here. And that just turns into 1.8i. Um, and since all this asks for is the acceleration of point A, then um, we're done. That's all we need to do. Okay. Now, that was pretty short. I want to go ahead and put in one more into this one. So let's look at the next one. 
And in this one, we've got a, a similar sort of weird setup where it's a gear with a gear mounted on it. And that smaller gear is, is turning on the track, which means that we have another point where it's zero velocity. And that is this point right there where those guys are in contact. All right. Now, in the last one, we had to figure out what was the velocity and the acceleration of the center. This time, they just flat out tell us what that is, which is pretty nice. And so the first thing that I did was I just wrote down what they tell us there. And I went ahead and wrote down uh, the vector from our known point to our unknown point. So R from O to A. And it's to the left, so it's negative 0.6, where well, that's the radius. Now, we're asked to find, in this question, we're asked to find angular acceleration and the acceleration of point A. So we've got two things to look for. And to find that angular acceleration, uh, I used a similar sort of trick as I did last time. but but backwards, okay? And the trick is we can relate the acceleration of the center to the angular acceleration uh, using a cross product here. So alpha cross R. And so R is just 0.3 from our point where there's no motion up to the point of interest. Um, now, in this case, it tells us what the value of the acceleration is. 3i. So we sort of do our cross product backwards a little bit and um, have to solve for the value of alpha. And we get minus 10 radians per second. Okay. So let's just double check that and see what that looks like. So negative means it's going to be this direction right there. And so that that's good. That works well with the motion that we expect. Then I did the exact same thing uh, in order to get the velocity. I started with a cross product and then worked backwards to get my value for omega. Okay. Now, it doesn't ask us to find omega, but I knew that we were going to have to have omega when we go to the next part, which is to find alpha. All right, um, not alpha, uh, we know what alpha is, uh, in order to find the acceleration of point A. We set up our equation just like before. So the one we're looking for is equal to the known. This is the tangential acceleration. That's the normal acceleration. Plug in all our values, take all our cross products, um, yada, yada, yada as we used to say in the 90s, and we get um, our answer right here. Okay, uh, pretty straightforward. So there's two of them for you.